very good morning to you, Grenada, and the rest of the world on this Wednesday morning, midweek. Today, the 11th day of December. I'm George Grant saying thanks for joining us on today's edition of Good Day, Grenada. Boy, and let me tell you, it's a very, very overcast, overcast morning. No rain right now. We did have some overnight showers, yes, but uh, no rain right now. But uh, nevertheless, nevertheless, looks kind of gloomy out there. Anyhow, I certainly hope that on the inside, you're feeling nice and warm, ready to take on the world, okay? And by the way, there are uh, not one, not two, but three cruise ships in town today. Two pretty large ones. They're uh, tied up at the Melville Street Cruise Terminal. And then there's a, a smaller one down at uh, Burns Point. Feel kind of sorry for uh, the visitors who came here looking for lots of sunshine today. Well, um, I still hope a lot of them do get off the ship, you know, for, uh, for the good of our vendors and tour operators and what have you. But uh, right now, it looks uh, kind of gloomy. So. Let's take a look at the rundown and see what sort of mischief we're going to get into on this uh, Wednesday morning. It's, uh, it's Christmas time, and you know what happens around Christmas time, right? It's a lot of debushing going on. Well, apparently there have been some issues, including some complaints about the debushers. And uh, the government issued a statement yesterday, which I'm going to share with you this morning. They're going to tighten up a little bit on the debushing operations taking place here. So stand by, that's coming your way momentarily. Then, I don't know how many of you have been following this, but uh, there have been a number of protests down at TAMCC about uh, the payment of increments to the TAMCC staff. Well, the head honcho down there has issued a statement, which I'm going to share with you. And uh, let's see where that one goes. We also have the national report for you this morning. And then, uh, I heard from her just a little while ago, she's gonna be coming in and sitting right here in a few minutes from now. Good old lady Sharon, she'll be joining us this morning. So that's your lineup for the next hour or so. Now, here we go, let's get down to what did they say? Brass tacks? Here we go. Oh, or should I, should I say good morning to you guys out there first? Yeah? Okay. Let's do that. Let's do that. Ernesto is first up this morning. Hazel is second. Benedict is third. Mansurat Alexander is fourth. Anthea Rollo is saying good morning. Arthur Langine is there as well. Kipling Francis is there. And, uh... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, how did Benedict show up there? Yeah, it's a wonderful Wednesday, isn't it, Benedict? Good to have you guys. Uh, Ernesto says, cold, freezing, and a little snow is falling. <laughs> well, I hope we're not going to have any snow here, but uh, nevertheless, like I mentioned, it's uh, kind of cloudy here this morning. Joan Wellington say good morning to you guys. Hello, Margaret. Hola, hola. John Franco is sending his greetings to you, and John Nosy Nick, uh, he's saying it's a wet Wednesday. Hey, John, well, you're probably having rain out there in Carriacou. We're not having it, at least so far, we're not having any here. Arthur Langan is asking, what took the government so long to check on these people working on the side of the road? <laughs> I don't know. Anthony the Riggs is saying uh, good morning from a soggy Brooklyn. Well. At least, uh, Anthony, Margaret made it to work this morning, so uh, can't be that bad. Good to see you, Anthony. Thanks for joining us, my dear friend. Um, yeah, that's it. So, now, let's get down to uh, brass tacks. The Ministry of Infrastructure Development says that a meeting will be arranged with contractors of the debushing de crews. And here's why they're going to have that meeting. They want to reinforce the stipulations of the Road Act. You'll find out why in a minute. They want to discuss the use of protective screens for the 2020 debushing program. And they want to evaluate the level of compliance 
with the contractual guidelines. Okay, so obviously there's a little problem there somewhere along the line. Apparently, the ministry has received complaints from residents with respect to damage to property and plants by crew members of the debushing program, as well as the indiscreet use of brush cutters, which pose a hazard to the motoring public. Okay, so says the statement. The ministry apologizes for any inconvenience and kindly asks the general public for its support and understanding. Let's see what happens after the meeting. The bushing crews are currently deployed for the period December 2nd to the 13th. And by the way, this is the final debushing program for 2019. Okay. Now, uh, before I move on to uh, the next little segment here, there's something I want to share with you. I came across this uh, just, uh, yeah, just a little while ago before coming on air. Scouting through social media, came across this. And I really want to share it with you because I think it's important. It's, it's no news or anything, but it's important. On Facebook this morning, I saw a statement by somebody named Jasmine Redhead. I can't say that I know this person, probably do, but I can't say that I do. And I really want to salute Miss Redhead, or Mrs. Redhead, whatever, for this piece that she wrote, because it is so poignant. Let me quote for you. How do you treat with people and their enablers who are boldly and overtly dishonest in their business dealings? Who see you as a customer? Hold on a sec here. Goodbye. Yeah, who see you not as a customer, a partner, or a client, but with a dollar sign over your head and as a means to an end? whose prices do not match the goods or services provided, but would automatically increase because of their needs at the time, who they perceive you to be, how much they perceive you to have, or how much they think you can afford. Have you folks ever run into that? Huh? Well. My grandmother used to say, it is not going to make them rich, and it is not going to make you poor. Don't lose sleep over it, and don't do business with them again. I have lived long enough to see that in the end, these people never prosper. The monies they rob eventually evaporate into thin air. Yes, sir, free. And go into paying things like medical bills. Get stolen by a bigger thief. Yeah. Retribution. They have very little to show for it after all is said and done. And most importantly, they cannot take it with them when they leave this earth. Mm -hmm. I am thankful that I can post with utmost confidence without fear of contradiction. No one can say I ever robbed, cheated, scammed, overcharged, double charged, defrauded, or schemed them. That is a burden I never want to bear. Thanks to my deceased grandmother, who taught me at a very early age that stealing, no matter in what form, is wrong. Those who know me a long time may remember we had a shop when I was growing up 
and I worked in that shop since I was five years old. I used to appropriate for personal use enough sweeties, soft drinks, chewing gum, biscuits, and all other things that were sweet. When I thought Granny was not looking, she caught me red-handed when I was about seven. All I can say about what happened afterwards is that I'm happy to be alive today to tell you the tale. I am grateful for that experience because it has taken me through life. Stealing from others in any form whatsoever to enrich yourself never, ever pays in the long run. Yeah. Keep that in mind, my dear friends. Keep that in mind. Thank you, Ms. Redhead. Sure hope to meet you someday. Having read that, I also want to remind you, I started telling you about this yesterday. Um, yesterday, I asked you to start thinking in terms of um, something good, something really good that has happened to you in the year 2019, this year. Because Christmas week, I want you guys to share with me. I certainly hope you've already started making notes. Share with me. I'm going to ask you every day, tell me one good thing that has happened to you in 2019. Notice, I'm not asking a lot, just one good thing. All right? Now, let's get to Tam CC. The payment of increment to the staff of the T.A. Marischal Community College has been an ongoing challenge over the last six years. The government gives an annual subvention to TAM CC of $1.4 million, plus an additional 1.9 is collected through tru uh, tuition payment and fees. The council right now is indebted to its staff to the amount of $6,100,000, which represents increments that were unpaid by the TAM CC over the past six years. In August of this year, a new TAM CC council was appointed with a majority of new members. The two long-standing union representatives on the TAM CC Council, Public Workers President and the GUT President General, raised the issue of increments to TAM CC staff at the September and October meetings of the Council. On November 7th, the unions began industrial actions in order to press this new Council for a speedy financial solution. After approximately four weeks of continuous industrial action by the unions and several meetings and negotiations between the unions and a council-appointed committee, the council on December 6th presented the unions with a formal written offer wherein council will pay the $6.1 million increment over a period of time as follows. The first scheduled payment will be made on or before December 30th, 2019, in the sum of $1,500,000. Then the schedule will be made by March 30th of next year for the payment of the other tranches upon the receipt by the Council of the completed manpower and financial audit reports. These reports will become the basis for an understanding of the available financial leverage and for ensuring prudence in the scheduling and payment of the remaining tranches. Time CC says it is committed to the payment of increments and Council expects the unions to study the formal written offer and continue negotiations towards a settlement. All council members 
both long-standing and new, are fully aware of the devastating effect that any irrational solution to the increment payment will have on the college's existence, the conduct of its core function of post-secondary education for the nation's students, and the future development of Grenada. Statement came from Tam CC, head honcho, yesterday. Okay? Chew on that for the rest of the day. Let me get back. Oh, by the way, she has she she has snuck in. <laughs> she has snuck in. Hey, want a bottle of water? There you go, Sharon. Good morning. Good to see you. Let me get back here and uh, hey guys, you're pouring in. Uh, um, Anthony the Reg says good morning from Brooklyn. Lydia James was saying good morning. Happy holidays. Oswald Darbo saying good morning. Somewhat overcast in my neck of the woods. Not just you, Billy. It's same thing down here, man. Uh, Claude Putna saying good morning. John Franco saying easy come, easy go. <laughs> yeah, John. John says Edvin Martin, acting police commissioner, made a complete fool of himself and Grenada in a televised interview yesterday about the shrimp farm and CBI debacle, in my humble opinion. Didn't see it. Rosina, oi, oi, oi. B-O-U-G-O-U-N-E-A-U. Bogunya. Bog. Bogunya. Let's just call her by her first name, Rosina. Rosina says amen to that, so I guess she's agreeing with what John is saying here. Peter Belfon says, good morning, George, to you and the rest of the pilgrims. Journey through this chaotic era where all of a sudden, where, where all at a sudden right is made to be seen as wrong, but right will stand... Let's try, let's try English language and forget about the parables, please. Margaret Francis says, be careful what you say, John. <laughs> he may look to sue you for libel or slander. He already hinting at slander because of reports of illegal sales of ordinary passports. Hmm. I don't have money to bail you out. <laughs> uh, go do some hard labor, Margaret. And Arthur Langine is saying the union shouldn't fall for that trap from this begging government. <laughs> All right, folks. Let me take a little break here. I'm anxious to get to Sharon, but we got to take this break and we got to bring you the national report. So I'm going to do that, have a little chat with my girlfriend here, and then, you know. Well, get down. Oh, Lincoln Roberts is saying, good morning to you, George, Sharon, and the rest of God's children one love yeah we'll get to sharon after this little break brand Light continues to celebrate 25 years of partnership and growth so this december we're giving every customer the chance to spin and win just pay your bill in full on or before december 18th then on wednesday december 18th join us at any grand Light customer care location spin to win giveaways that will make this season even more festive hams groceries gift vouchers wine electricity vouchers and more join the celebration december December 18th, spin and win with Grand Lake. Visit our website or Facebook page for more information. Terms and conditions apply. My wish upon a star, for a bank is better by far. Whatever your wish is for this Christmas, we'll give you no interest and no fuss. Co-op Bank is making Christmas wishes come true. Fix up your home, treat your loved ones, and get everything on your Christmas list this year with our No Fuss Loans. As we count down the 12 days to Christmas, you can win awesome prizes every day. Special terms and conditions apply. Christmas wishes come true with Co-op Bank and you. Welcome home. 
Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try their sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates, 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com. When you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. Because your vehicle is a necessity, being roadworthy is critical. Hubbard's Motor Department introduces its new tire and battery sales and service outlet located at Building Supplies Compound in Grand Dance, close to the Sugar Mill Roundabout. Available are a wide range of competitively priced tires, maintenance-free batteries, oils and lubricants. Keeping in mind your busy schedule, this outlet is equipped to provide you with fast and reliable service. Simply drive in and you'll be delighted with your service experience. For more information, contact 4402087 Hubbards. Quality service, affordable prices. Government widens its search for qualified nurses in the interim. Details of this story and more in the National Report. Welcome back with the details of the news for Tuesday, December 10th. I am Sherry Ann Noel. The government of Grenada is widening the scope of countries for which it is seeking qualified nurses in the interim to deal with the severe shortfall created by the flow of local nurses from Grenada to other countries like the United Kingdom. During Tuesday's post-cabinet press briefing, Minister for Health Honorable Nicholas Steele revealed that apart from Cuba, Grenada is also looking extra-regionally, as in the case with some Caribbean neighbors. We have reached out to, to Ghana, like Barbados has, um, and to India. Um, we are expecting some, some preliminary information that will allow us to proceed, but we're going to cast a wide net and try and get as many nurses in the interim as we up, train up our various nurses. And truly, I think right now that we, we also, as a people as a whole, um, need to contemplate the reintroduction of the, the hospital authority, which would allow or would facilitate, I think, many of the solutions that not just the government, but the people and the various stakeholders, doctors and nurses and healthcare providers have been asking for. A delegation from the Ministry of Health returned from Cuba where they looked at the possibility of bringing in about 20 to 40 nurses as a stopgap. As many as 100 persons were interviewed. We are seeking out somewhere between 20 to 40 nurses in various specialties. The reason that we have to deal with this situation is that those nurses who are leaving are, are our more experienced nurses. And while we do have a nursing school in conjunction with SGU, those nurses who are graduating, while they are graduating with a bachelor's degree, they are lacking in experience. So it is not uh, easy or, or advisable for us to send them out into the communities unsupervised initially. So that is why we have to look, like other Caribbean islands, at other solutions, extra-regional solutions or solutions from Cuba. Grenada is not the only Caribbean country faced with the problem of immigration of nurses. Barbados, Trinidad, Jamaica and St. Lucia, to name a few, have also been looking outside the region for nurses. Minister Steele says they now have to find appropriate housing for the nurses. As Minister for Health, he says he looks forward to the day when they can pay those in the healthcare system what is appropriate for their contributions. The Royal Grenada Police Force is confident of a significant decrease in the incidence of driving under the influence once a mandatory breathalyzer test is officially implemented. Government passed and implemented the breathalyzer legislation some time ago, which will give the RGPF the authority to carry out alcohol testing on motorists who are suspected of driving under the influence of alcohol. 
Acting Commissioner of Police Edwin Martin spoke to the benefits of the legislation during Tuesday's post-cabinet briefing. This new legislation will now act as a deterrent to attitudes of drink and drive, that it will afford a timely intervention on the part of law enforcement by taking action on suspected cases that will prevent accidents and save life and property. The net value of which will be to improve road safety um, for motorists and pedestrians alike. We want to be able to say that since the rolling out of this, notwithstanding the efforts of law enforcement, at the end of the Christmas season, no one has been charged or ticketed for the issue of dealing with um, driving under the influence of alcohol. I think the intervention is timely. It is good that it's happened at a festive time. So hopefully help us get that information out that we can have more responsible driving and reduce the incidence of the accidents and fatalities that we have around this time. The St. George's University invested more than 40,000 U.S. dollars to procure the equipment to implement the breathalyzer. He says a complete briefing on the legislation and demonstration will be held on Thursday at police headquarters. This is the National Report. More news after the break. Our government between 2013 and 2019 has spent over $42 million on house repair and an additional $28 million in soft loans for housing, a total of over $17 million. Additionally, 354 units were constructed and distributed through our partnership with the People's Republic of China. And another 646 units are currently under construction, a total of 1,000 housing units. Your government, our government, Hard at work, meeting the housing needs of our people. Welcome back. The government of Grenada is making its final preparations to roll out the nursing assistance training program from January 2020. 50 nursing assistants will be trained for one year. Honorable Nicholas Steele, Minister for Health and Social Security at the weekly post-cabinet press briefing, announced that the ministry is working collaboratively with other organizations to ensure that there is a smooth rollout. We are in final negotiations with La Bouquin and the National Training Authority of Grenada as well as the Ministry of Youth and Education to finalize uh, the training of 50 nursing assistants um, in, batch, in two batches of 25. Um, I look forward to that starting. We do have some final meetings just to make sure that we meet the criteria of Nursing Council, meet the criteria of the National Training Authority as well as the, the uh, Labucane and the Ministry of Health. I expect that that can be resolved within the next week and that we can start the selection process to have the, those classes start in early January. The training will provide the nursing assistants with certification. They would be receive a CVQ or at least a, a NVQ um, for a nursing assistant. That is the discussions we're having to make sure that they do have that required or will attain at the end of that one year program the requisite CBQ. Um, previously, it's just, it was just the Ministry of Health with the, the service provider um, in terms of educating or the Ministry of Health within its own teaching school. But engaging the NTAs to ensure that the re relevant vocational qualifications are achieved by the individuals. Moving along, turning Grenada's honey into money. That is the focus of a workshop now on the way at the Spice Basket in St. George. Details in this report by Mina Booker, Public Relations Officer in the Ministry of Agriculture. As part of the activities for the project, strengthening the apiculture value chain in Grenada, a number of apiculturists as well as extension officers are involved in a three-day workshop focusing on transforming Grenada's honey into money. The workshop, which is supported by the Food and Agricultural Organization, or FAO, focuses on the marketing approaches for growing a beekeeping and bee products business. It opened at the Spice Basket on Monday 9th December and is facilitated by Ted Denard out of Savannah Bee Company in the U.S. and Catherine Booker from the Exuma Foundation in the Bahamas. These two facilitators will share their success stories in apiculture and marketing respectively and deliberate on areas including marketing plan basics, understanding the customer, the do's and don'ts of honey selling, 
and others. Delivering welcome remarks at the opening session, Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Agriculture and Lands, Mr. Elvis Maureen, stressed on the importance of remaining relevant in an evolving industry. As you deliberate throughout this week, that we have to begin to think about and reevaluate, do some introspection as to where you are in the value chain and what you are able to do best in your value chain. So you produce, you process, you market, and everything. But the time has come for us to look at where, in other words, your expertise, what you are best at, and focus in that area. It would save you money, it would save you time. When I speak about, or when I think about value chain, as with the honey in Grenada, I am seeing down the road a Grenadian brand. And we have to begin to look at that. I am seeing a Grenadian brand. What does that mean? It means that we have to get to the place where we have to focus on central processing. And I'm not saying it's going to be something that would be a walk in the park. I know many persons may not be comfortable with it but we have to get there for a number of reasons if we are to protect the market that we have and to maintain a brand of course this is the way out we have to look at that technical and practical experience will be shared with the apiculture enthusiasts in an effort to improve commercialization of the value chain of bee products Andreas Gonzalez Serrano, the lead technical officer representing the FAO, lauds the local apiculture sector and the key players that continue to make significant contributions through an array of primary and secondary products and a plant pollination, which is critical to crop production. Grenada Island honey is considered one of the best in the world. And for this, different things have merged and unique terroir able to grow a broad and diverse ecosystem, a well-organized breeding association, and the close survey and advice of the National Veterinary Services for assuring a healthy production and animals and, and the bees that produce that honey. It is, it is with great pleasure that we at the Food and Agriculture Office of the United Nations are supporting this initiative through a technical cooperation program called Strengthening the Apiculture Value and Change in Grenada. The FAO has actively participated in the capacity building of the Grenada Association of Beekeepers. The overall project aims to improve stakeholders' understanding of existing and potential market opportunities and strategies required to access the growing local market, analysis of the honey value chain, and market assessment study. Gonzalez Serrano spoke of the expected outcomes from this technical arrangement. Just to summarize the outputs expected out of this technical cooperation program we have, an improved strength and capacity of the Beekeeper Association of Grenada, improved national capacity to monitor and identify pests and disease that impact the sector, and guest husbandry practices documented and farmers trained in apiary management in best practices. Strengthening the apiculture value chain in Grenada aligns to the FAO's mandate to promote sustainable development. It also promotes the development of rural areas, gender equality principles, and a call for the integration of young people to the apiculture business. For the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Mina Buka. And with this story, we come to the end of the National Report for Tuesday, December 10th. Recapping the top story, government widens its search for qualified nurses in the interim. On behalf of the entire news and production team, I am Sharia Noel, thanking you for viewing.
right, Sharon, I'm going to ask you to give me a few minutes because uh, the report this morning from the, NAT, from the GIS really got the audience worked up. So uh, let me spend a few minutes with them. First of all, there's a note here from Joan Wellington who said a little while ago in response to what I was saying, I think that piece I read about stealing. She says, sound advice, Mr. Grant. I live with a teaching by my deceased mother. She used to say to us, work for what we want and do not envy anyone for what they have because we never know what they had to do to get it. Sometimes, oh, 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 sometimes we might be surprised at what they do for their riches. Do you ever see one climb up the ladder fast, fast, fast? and after a period of time, they fall right back down and can't get up? <laughs> yes, Joan. I had a mom like that, too. Thanks a lot. Margaret says, ah, so you can't pay your homegrown nurses, but you could import nurses and give them a salary and housing. Grenada Nicely. <laughs> hey, Max. That's a story. Uh, uh, what's his name? Steele. Uh, okay, Lori Bridgman says, good morning. Could you share with me if there's a library in the big parish, which is Grenville? If not, can you find someone to come to your program and explain why there is not one? Margaret says, did I hear him say that no one has been ticketed for DWI? Driving while impaired. Um, I don't know. I, I don't remember Max. Joel Wellington said, would these foreign nurses be working for grooming? Just asking. Um, John says, read the drunk driving. Haven't they had this law for a long time now? Breathalyzing someone after they have killed someone is a bit too late. Amen, John. Benedict Cador says, I was wondering the same thing. Our experienced nurses are leaving, and you need experienced nurses, so you will pay foreigners. Pay attention to the source of these replacement nurses. I think Barbados, was it? Ernesto says, Minister Steele, you should realize when he decided to give the contract, he created that mess. So let him swim in it. Forgive me, folks. Forgive me. <laughs> Margaret says, thank you, John. You have to perpetually and randomly con conduct sobriety tests. The reason why no one was ticketed is because no one has been screened before an accident. Logical, Mags. Anthony Fraser says, Mr. Steele, the 38 million EC dollars, it is said, is coming our way via you know who, you know who is feeding us, Chinese, Mr. Steele. Why not use it to build a state-of-the-art hospital? Mr. Steele, were you not, were you not the, <sighs> goodbye, Anthony, I gone. Laurie Bridgman says, it is so sad that the Minister of Education is from the big parish and cannot see the importance of one. That's a library, I would imagine. In order to educate our people and the students of that parish, Hey, listen, we have a library sitting, sitting in a wreck down there on the Carinage. Peter Belfon says, quite noticeable. The Minister of Health repeatedly made references to other countries. Is this an attempt to save face? The desire to train nursing assistants is a welcome decision. However, what the government refused to give to its local nurses has now found itself in an unavoidable situation 
where they have to provide for these nurses. They are now recruiting from outside of the country. Logic. Ernesto, I'm not even going to go there. Uh, John Nosyneck says, read the honey. It's a story about honey. Too much of these pesticides will kill the bees. Then no. Then no, there's honey. Hey, what's going on this morning, folks? Is it me, or have you guys gone ballistic? I'm trying to get everybody in, and I'm making a real fool of myself here, because I can't read this stuff. Uh, Margaret says, there's a library in St. There is a library in St. George's anymore. You think they'll put one in Grenville? Education is a dangerous thing. You can't educate the masses because they will realize the emperor has no clothes and <laughs> no clothes, and you will lose you will lose control. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Benedict says I fully agree. However, we have to be concerned about the quality of due diligence that will go into verifying the backgrounds of these people. Um. Margaret Francis says, I meant, isn't there a library? Yeah, I know what you meant. Peter Belfon says, Ms. Lorette Clarkson and the other senior persons who were part of the Grenada School of Nursing are today weeping, knowing that all their warnings and good advice fell on deaf ears regarding the, control, or regarding the school of nursing. Uh-huh, I heard that too. Um, Margaret says, Peter Belfon, you're quite right about Laura Clarkson and all, and the School of Nursing. I remember those days well. Okay. Um, uh, Kipling says, it's okay, I feel good going in a hospital and meeting Grenadian nurse. Let them come. If they're not appreciated home, Salary-wise, help me, Father. Help me, help me, help me. Folks, quick break, and uh, take a look. I just want you to know that she's here for sure. Take a look. There she is. Eh? There she is, smiling your little face off. Good to see you, Sharon. Getting to you in just a wee bit. Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates, 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com when you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. Can I have a chicken lunch, please? Large. Real nice today. Mm -mm. I don't want that. But well, you just asked for a chicken lunch. I don't have problem with the lunch. I freed the container. Why is the problem with it? These styrofoam containers, they do good for the environment. They shot me with life. What, what foolish is you telling me? So what do you want me to use? Put my food in this. Where you get that? At the food fair, where you could get all biodegradable food boxes and disposable food supplies like cups, plates, anything you could think about. Name it, it's there. And they don't harm the environment. Food fair, taking the lead in cleaning up and protecting the environment. Hey, hey, like you take me advice, you get in your biodegradable food supplies. Hey girl, I supporting who's supporting the environment. That is why I shop in that food fair. Food fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. Products distributed by Hubbard's agency, Kirani James Boulevard.
Co-op Bank is making Christmas wishes come true. Fix up your home, treat your loved ones, and get everything on your Christmas list this year with our No Fuss Loans. As we count down the 12 days to Christmas, you can win awesome prizes every day. Special terms and conditions apply. Christmas wishes come true with Co-op Bank and you. There she is. Good morning, Sharon. And how are you? I'm very good. Very, yeah, very good. Very good this morning. Was it raining when you came in? Ooh. When I came in here? Yeah. No, it wasn't raining. But it rained but overnight. It, man, like never before. You think it's September? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots yeah. and lots and lots of rain. Yeah. So. And and supposedly the hurricane season is over. But you know yeah. we're seeing we're seeing the whole global weather pattern change. With climate change, yeah, things are happening. And Christmas, remember a couple of years ago, about three years ago, there was a really bad storm on Christmas Eve day yeah. in St. Vincent. <laughs> yes, 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 yeah, yeah. So you never know. Changes they are happening. There are a lot of people who still question whether or not these changes should be attributable to this thing we call climate change. But I don't know. Well, this is as if it's not a, a weather storm, it's some other storm, but things, <laughs> Grenada we, is we always here. Huh? Oh, man. <laughs> Never a dull moment. Listen, Sharon, let me, let me tell you right off the bat. I think the last time you were here, you, I didn't think, but you brought me a really nice chunk of cake, Christmas yes. cake. And I, I, you were hoping that this would last me until Christmas. Well, bottom line is, I said to you, I'll be lucky if it makes it to Friday. Mm -mm. Well, I'm proud to report this morning, it made it to Saturday. <laughs> you are terrible. <laughs> Sharon, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't. From the, from the moment I put the first piece in my mouth, I knew that this ain't gonna last very long. It ain't gonna last very long, and it certainly didn't. So, uh, does that mean you're gonna be baking more cake before Christmas? Well, I didn't plan to, but I actually baked on Saturday for my daughter. And um, somebody called me yesterday and said, oh, next, next year I want two cakes, not one. And my brothers called and they're all enjoying the cakes. And one actually called to, to ask me, um, now how exactly did you do this? <laughs> and I had to walk him through. So he is baking, I think it's today. So I'll know later what. But you know, part of the ingredients of all the things that you put in it is something called love. Okay. I love doing it, and you put a lot of love in it, and it come out like magic. You know, I sat down here munching on your cake the other day, and I could not help but remember um, my mom. Okay. Christmas, my mom used to bake cakes, not just for us here in Grenada. She used to ship these cakes to the States and to Canada and to England and all over the place. And everybody wanted for a grand cake. Yes. Right? And what I remember most about those days is that we used to have a fight. When I say we, my brother and my two sisters, who gets to scrape the bowl? <laughs> Still happening. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> My Never nephew was that. there, man, and he said, Auntie, remember, you don't put everything in the tins. So he saw me with a scraper. He said, come on, Auntie, I need to clean it. So I had to leave a little bit for him to... Um, uh, yeah. yeah, that was the best part of it. <laughs> that was the best. And by then, the, the little rum is still fresh. Yes. Being baked. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I know. So, my friend, what's up your sleeve? Oh, by the way, yeah. Margaret says, Sharon, he has no behavior and is out of control. Max, mind your own business. <laughs> I do have control. Well, I might have to bake before Christmas, it seems. Yeah. John says, exactly. Food prepared with love tastes so much better. Exactly. He's so right. You know, some people, they, they cook and you could just look at their face and you decide you don't want the food because the anger and everything that goes in it. And then some again, the love that goes in my, my brother Kennedy, man. Yeah. Well, your whole family a bunch of chefs, aren't every, they? Everybody cooks, everybody. And um, 
It's just the love. That's how our mother taught us. Yeah. We had to cook with love. Whatever you're doing. She said when you're making your bed up, just remember that just in case Jesus showed up, <laughs> your bed is well made. So you make everything with love. You clean your house. This morning by, by 6 o'clock, I had finished sweep my whole house, mop, clean. 7 o'clock I was finishing off in my shower. My house is sparkling. And normally after 1 o'clock, that is my time. That's okay. when I read and... So after 1 o'clock today, you can start on my place? <laughs> no, I can do that before 1 o'clock. <laughs> after 1 o'clock is Sharon time. So, um, yeah. John Franco says, Ms. Sharon, may I purchase a love-filled cake? I've not had one in 35 years. Where is he? Where are you, John? John Franco? John Franco, he's going to tell us in a minute. Grenada Sunshine says, Oh, Grenada Sunshine says, I grew up with Miss Grant's black cake at Christmas. Ah. Grenada Sunshine, who are you, girl? I'm assuming it's a girl, a lady. My goodness, so you know, mom, mom, oh God, the rest of it. And you know what? Yesterday was the anniversary of her passing. Oh my gosh. You know? That was kind of, every year it's kind of hard for me to, you know, think about that because it's, it's in my outlook on my computer and it keeps popping up every year, right? Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what's just as hard. Today is the anniversary of Brandy, my puppy, Brandy's passing. Yeah. The day after I laid my mom to rest, I had to put my favorite pooch to sleep. Wow. That hurt, that hurt, that hurt. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. But you know, Christmas time, you think of all your loved ones, wherever they are. And this, this year is kind of hard for me because my youngest son is not here. Mm. And we're, we're very, very close. Well, he must be going through hell, right? You know? And my daughter is married, so no longer at home. So I still have one at home, thank God. And three of my sons are in Belize, and mother and daddy gone. So it's, it's, it's rough, yeah. you know? But um, they're, they're, they're in your heart and your spirit. Some things you just so never forget. Yeah, and you have to get on with life and live, live your best life. And remember, you have other people who need you. Mm -hmm. I think about my grandchildren and I, you have okay. to live. Now, let's see here. Grenada Sunshine says, I'm a girl from Grenville. God bless her soul. Thank you so much, Grenada Sunshine. We will all meet again in the great beyond. One That's of these right. Days. Peter Belfont says, oh yes. How can you beat the scraping of the bowl or the, wa <laughs> or the, wa or the wash pan? He says, it was an all time gathering and waiting to see who mommy would give the bowl to the stuff. Yes. <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> the person that helped you cream the, the butter and the sugar. Yeah. I, yeah, you're right. I had to pay. Eh? I, I was actually buying that scraping because I had to. And listen, no electric mixes and things. You beat the thing. Well, you know, I don't use electric mixes. I mm. use still use a wooden spoon and a bowl. That's right. That's what get we one use. of the boys to start the creaming of the sugar and the butter, and then I take over. And how long do you, you soak your fruits for? A year. A year? A year. Them fruits totally... So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, started, I started my new batch for next year already. OK. My, oh my. But that doesn't say you can't make a... a if you're going to use fresh fruits like that, that were not soaked for the year, you simmer it. You bring it to, to a quick boil with the wine and, and your spices and everything, and then you simmer it for a few minutes, and you put it to soak, and they cool overnight, and, and that will do. OK. Now, since we're on Christmas cake here, let me ask you this. What, what do you use for a Christmas tree? You buy these artificial trees, or no. you? Boring. I get a real tree, and you uh, should see my tree. My tree is ten feet tall. Evergreen. Yes. 
10 Listen feet tall order. from the black forest. I order my Christmas tree in November from forestry. Well, wait a minute. There's an area up in Granite Town where they have those trees, It's right? called the Black Forest. Well, okay. Yes, and you can call forestry and order a tree the size you want. It's $10 a foot. So my, my tree is 10 feet tall. It's almost nice. touching the ceiling. They're nice trees? Beautiful. Beautiful. Of course, you could trim it to the shape you want, but I like it natural. So, so my son, who... Um, Every time we look at it, he say, Mommy, my, my what? OCD kicking in. He wants to trim it. I said, leave my tree alone. Okay. So it's all decorated and everything is in place. Back in my day, there were two, uh, two types of trees we used. One, the Borden tree. Mm. You know what that is? I am not too sure. Okay, and it has a really, really distinct smell to it. But the other one was what we call whistling willow. Okay. All right. I don't know how you describe a whistling willow. It doesn't have leaves per se, but it has a lot of things growing out of it. And that was really not, left a mess. It left a mess after Christmas, but we didn't mind. We but one this. of the, the most natural, I don't know why we think a Christmas tree, you have to come from wide at the bottom and narrow at the top, but a nutmeg tree, when you look at the shape of a nutmeg and you have all the nutmegs in it, all you, I mean, that's, it's a beautiful... People do use nutmeg trees. I don't know if they do, but they should. If yeah, you have yeah, a nutmeg yeah. tree outside in your yard or something. And they come pre-decorated. They got nutmegs in them. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> By the way, Peter Belfond says, yes, the wooden spoon has a special magic. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yes, man. So. Uh, Lori Bridgman says, I am a revolutionary boy. I have no pardon, but lately the talk of the town was the sale of passports. I never know when it was free. Can someone... Lori, when, when was what? Something. When was passports free? Pa passports were never free. They used to be like $25. Okay. But they're gone right up to... John is saying, double condolences to you, George. Yeah, thank you very much, John. Really, really tough time. These two days, yesterday and today. But life goes on. Yep. So I started asking you a little while ago, what, was, what you got up your sleeve today? Today, I've, I've done so much for the day already that um, what am I doing today? Today, I'm painting the white, I call it the skirting board. Some people call it the kickboard, the, you, you know, the, the, the bottom of your walls. You keep this board so that God alone knows what it's for. But my house have this um, about uh, three inch board, borders the bottom of, mm -hmm. of the, all the rooms. I was looking to see if you have it, but you don't. I don't know exactly, that's why they call it a kickboard. So when you, you yeah, do it. Sure. In. So that, I have, my yard has been power washed. Everything is, I guess I have to clean my car now, just to keep busy. That's the last <laughs> thing to do. Uh, um, we're hoping, I was hoping to get Odinga here with me because in Pitamatnik, for example, we started to serenade and everything already. So that is part of our custom, the serenade. And one of the things I want to talk about is, do you know that the majority of the people in Pitamatnik, they play instruments and so, and most of them has never been trained. Nobody taught them. They just play guitar and mandolin and violin and all these things. So they gather and they've started their house to house. Okay. serenading and one of the things we we want to do well Odinga is doing and I'm going to assist her is a luncheon or dinner for the elderly mm -hmm. so that you can thank them for for their contribution to their country thank you for your contribution to your country and by the way is Odinga here or is she back in she, she she was in Grenada two days ago I'm not too sure if she's here or she's you know, back up. 
I haven't. I think the last time I saw her was that that Grin Save uh, function Lunch, yeah. down at Trade Center. Um, Sharon, one of these days when she's here, if you're on, could you ask her to come in? I will. You know, I still remember that lady, the one and only broadcast that we have actually done in Penny Martinique. So much of that was a result of the help that she gave us. That woman was so helpful. We stayed, she has a little guest house property. She has a guest house. Her, her mother actually grew up in the same house with me. And so we're very close. She's, she's very young, you know, but she has one of these. She has a family. Yeah, she has a, a family. daughter. Yes, her yeah. da daughter just finished um, Tam C. Okay. But she's, um, She's full of energy. She has a good heart, and she means well, and she's very dedicated to Peter Martinique. Very. Anybody who's on Facebook knows that. Yeah. You touch Peter Martinique, you touch Odinda. Yeah. She's like a young version of what I used to be. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, by the way, both John Franco and Charmaine DeLille say, it's the baseboard. That's what you were talking about. Baseboard. baseboard. Right. Uh, thanks, John. And thank thanks, you. Charmaine. Thank you. Baseboard. Peter Belfon says, oh, that whistling willow is an all-time classic. It gives a particular sound that is almost unexplainable. That's true. Really? We, we had a line of those trees uh, in front of our house in Grenville. Okay. When the wind blows. It it's whistles. Like it whistles. Yeah, 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 yeah. I never encountered the, the whistling willow. I know the, the weeping willow. Because mm. uh, when I lived in England, I lived in um, an area called Hayes, Middlesex, off the Oxbridge Road. You lived in Hayes? I lived in Hayes. You lived in hell? And up the, <laughs> not Hades, H A Y E S. And up the road, the, the, the village pub was called the, the weeping willow. Okay. And I actually, my street was called Willow Tree Lane. So they had a lot of willows, but I've never encountered the whistling willow. Okay. All right, so we, we dealt with the house cleaning, we dealt with the cake, um, we dealt with the Christmas tree, um, the food. Food. We're at Vincent's this Christmas. Okay. And, um, oh Lord, what a feast that is. If you ever go to these Roberts people's home. <laughs> but one of the things that we have done with, with we are now the, the old people, although Vincent would say to me, um, call yourself old if you want, but he young. Well, our generation are the, um, the older ones. So we've handed down to, to the next generation. So my nieces and so, they would get together and work out the menu and just inform everybody what they have to do. Okay. So we've passed that part on to them. And so. tell us about Linky. Linky? You know, it's his role in order. Man, he but is I, not I, here. Hold on, Linky, I understand. I know that you're based in <laughs> Florida, but hey, you've been dreaming. Where are you now? You're in, you're in New York or you're back in... He showed up here this morning. Where are you now? Let us know, please. I'm not even sure where he is right now, but I pray that one day he'll spend Christmas with us. He'll, I spent Christmas with him not last year, year before, because I went up to be with him for Christmas. And he, you should see his house. Decorations we like you seen. never believe. Lights like you, you can't even imagine. And he starts like from right after Thanksgiving and he does all his work himself. That guy is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I briefly met him. He was here just a couple of months ago. Yes, in August. In August, yeah. And I briefly met him. We were hoping to meet for a little more time, but that didn't materialize. I, anyhow, yeah. just make sure that the next time you're coming, you leave some space, some time for Georgie. Yes. All right? Huh? Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. What you done? <laughs> what you gonna do? <laughs> Margaret Francis says, passports were never free. The current convo resale of passports has to do with the sale of both regular and diplomatic passports to foreigners 
for hundreds of thousands of dollars which have disappeared. And most importantly, the majority of the buyers of these passports have turned out to be crooks and chasters. These passport sales have gone these passport sales have had negative impacts on the region's banking and travel. Okay. John says he's having some buffering big time. So now watching on Grenada broadcast. Okay. All right, John, boy. You know, my wish for you guys in 2020 is that you get some good internet up there because I would so like to include Carrie Akul, this lady from Pity Martinique, but she's here in Grenada. I would really love to include Carrie Akul in Pity Martinique, but the quality of the internet up there, it's just really, really pathetic. Yeah. So say a prayer, maybe in the new year we'll have. It's really dodgy. Yeah. But I've had a lot of promises, you know, but none of them have materialized. Didn't they yeah. recently do work in Carrie Akul on the internet? Not too sure. Uh, not too sure. Um, I deliberately didn't want to speak about the passports and so, because I thought there, there are enough people talking about it and there's enough. I am beginning to get a kind of negative vibration because of, of all this. And that's one of the things I avoid in my life, negative vibrations. I, um, I could shut it out, I have the ability to shut to, to sh shut out negative stuff. So this time of the year, um, a lot of people say bring, bring back the Christ in Christmas. And I wonder what they really mean or if they're really serious. One of the things I do as a Catholic is do the novenas and, and stuff. But you don't have to go there to do that. You could do it in your bedroom, you could do it in your house, but you know something this morning, almost as if something woke me up. I was just wide awake at 10 to four and the rain was pouring down and it was so cold. In St. Paul's, it was so cold. And I sat there and I, when I opened my, my, my um, sliding door, got onto my veranda and the rain was coming like from the south and it paid me down, but it was so nice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you just give thanks for all the good things in your life and try and forget the negative. I tired, I, I'm tired of, um, I am tired of beating up in KCM. I'm tired of hearing people beating up. And the reality is it doesn't even make a difference to them. It makes no difference because these people are who they are and no matter how angry we get, we send our blood pressures up, we send our blood sugar up and all that, and they don't care because they're gonna do what, they, what they're doing, they're gonna continue doing what they're doing, they're gonna continue teeth in election, they're gonna continue doing all these things. So for the time being, for the end of the year, let's forget them. Let's drink with wine and with sorrel and with ginger beer and with cake and... Joan Wellington says, my same parts. Yeah, leave them alone. Listen, Sharon, I was talking to our good buddy, Margaret, a couple of days ago. And Margaret made a little suggestion that, you know, why don't we uh, do a little segment where people talk about something good yeah. that has happened to them mm -hmm. in 2019. So I started telling people about it. I think it was yesterday I started telling people about this. And what I'd like, I ask people to do is make a note, just, just one thing, just one thing good that has happened to you in 2019. Sharon, I look at that as a test. And I am hoping that they prove me wrong. But I am very doubtful that we will get a lot of people who are willing to share just one good thing that happened to them in 2019. They're very quick 
to go on social media and criticize, criticize, criticize. Yeah. Let me tell you, if you can't find one good thing that's happened in your life over the last year, I'm not even sure it's worth being alive. You know something? When you, when you give thanks, remember I'm a Reiki master and we have five precepts that we live by. No, Reiki is not a religion. But when you, when you look at the precepts, it, it starts off with just for today. Five things just for today. Just for today, do not worry. Just for today, do not be angry. Honor your parents, teachers, and elders. Live your life honestly and live in an attitude of gratitude. And you know, if each day you take these things and you look at it, and this is what I do every day, I think about it. I, do. I give thanks for all the things in my life. First thing in the morning, last thing in the night, I give thanks. I give thanks for people I meet in town. I give thanks for the person that cuts me off and I just smile and wave to them as I drive past. You know, for whatever. Somebody cussed me the other day, about, about, um, they were wrong, you know, somebody else is in, my, in the car with me. And in Grenada, like nobody really read the, the highway code and know that if, if you have an obstruction in front of you, you the one to stop mm -hmm. and let the person with a clear passage pass. And I was about to pass and this person decided to pull out from behind the, the obstruction. And he cussed me off, woman, you can't drive, and cussed me off, and uh, I sent a kiss for him. And I'm sure for the rest of the day, he must have been angry. But you know what? I was in a good place. And this is, this is the little things that we do. I could tell you something incredible that happened to me in the last 24 hours. It didn't happen to me, but it happened to my, my baby grandson. And he won the cross country. We were small and had cross country yesterday for the, the junior grades, the babies. And he won. And to me, that was a big thing. Ethan won the cross country. Mm -hmm. My, my daughter-in-law in, in Belize sent me a picture of my, a video of my granddaughter dancing at her Christmas pageant. Hey, all these things I give thanks for. Mm -hmm. I have seven grandchildren. I give thanks for, for them by name every day. And that's, that's, that's all. I don't see, I'm not telling you I don't get angry, you know. I get angry and I blow off and I get back in a good place. Benedict Cassor, Benedict Cassor. Cassor. Ben, <laughs> Benedict, I'm sorry. Benedict Cador says, George, I can give you more than one. Very Benedict, good. be an example for the rest of the team. You know, rather than just come on here and bitch and bitch and bitch, mm -hmm. one good yeah. thing that has happened. I want to see you guys happy. Doesn't it make you happy when you think of the good things? The first good thing, you woke up this morning. Give thanks. I thank God for life. The, the fact that I opened them two eyes. Exactly. Give thanks. Yeah. Yeah, okay. For everything. And you know, sometimes, you're in a situation, you're in a, these days in Grenada, we have traffic jam. Can you imagine? You're caught up in a traffic jam. And you, as you say, you're bitching. But you know something? You go further down, like the other day on, on um, Karani James Boulevard. I said, what's all this traffic about? You know? And as I go past Foodlands, I saw that a big truck ran into the back of a, a little car very little car and I say Lord boy you know could have been you mm -hmm. give thanks and you could imagine the impact of that big truck in the back of that little car that person either get a whiplash or turn out the person stop for somebody to cross the crossing you know and the truck just went into the back of them John says I helped someone when they really needed it his thanks, or his thank you, was reward enough. Exactly. 
those are the little things you appreciate, John. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Peter Belfon says, one good thing that happened to me during 2019 is the satisfaction I got from helping other persons. And I know that what was done, they were thankful to. And I know that what was done, they were thankful to. Little things like that make such a big difference. Mm -hmm. But you know something, when you do things without even expecting anybody ah, to say thanks, ah, because ah. you know, you, you, you're you supposed to do it from the goodness of your heart, because if you expect them to say thanks and they don't, then you feel a how, because you know, expectation limits the joy. Yeah. When, you, when you expect something and you don't get it, then you feel badly. Yeah. So just do it without even thinking twice. I have done stuff. I met a young lady on Saturday. She stopped me as a, I was walking past in, in town. And she said, you remember me? And I looked back and I said, yeah, I remember the face. I can't remember the name. She said, you taught me in Vendom. And she called, she said, mom, mom, come see Miss Roberts. She said, you Sharon Roberts, right? I said, yes. And I thought, wow, I taught in Vendom in 1976. And this is somebody I haven't seen for years. And you know how good that feels? You know, one day last week downtown, uh, walking around, and this lady came up to me and said, hey, Mr. Grant, it's me. And I said, okay, hi, how are you? It's me. <laughs> you don't know who I am, do you? I said, no, I don't. It's me, Marsha, on the forum, on uh, Facebook. Marsha is somebody who had shown up here time and time again. And she had this glow, this beam all over her face. She was happy, it seems, to have met me, okay? and. I, my eyes lit up when I realized that this is somebody who watches our program, okay? And then she says, I am Marsha, so, so, so. Okay. Man, I was ecstatic for the rest of the day. I met this lady, I met this lady. I haven't seen her since. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> seen her since. Marsha, wherever you are, come out of the woodwork. We want to see you again. I want to introduce you to the rest of the gang here, please, please. We would love to see it. Thank you so much. Um, okay, now, Peter, thanks for telling us, Peter, you know, about what happened to you in 2019, but try and save these for, I think we're, we're probably gonna start this on the Thursday or the Wednesday before Christmas, okay? Um, I want us to do, because Christmas is a Wednesday, let me check here, Christmas is a Wednesday, isn't it? I don't even know. You don't, you don't even know. Not a Tuesday. Hold on a sec. December twenty fifth is a Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's um, Christmas Eve is Tuesday. Okay. Okay. So yeah, let's let's make a big do out of this. Something good. We want you guys to be happy. Yeah. Perk up. Perk up. Okay. So. Okay, uh, Sharon, I think that's going to do it for this morning. Thank you so much. Yeah. As always, look at that glow on her face. I mean, geez, you know. Geez, geez, geez. <laughs> My dear friends, this is where we're going to uh, say bonsoir to Sharon. Yeah. And uh, be sure to listen to us on Sunday, Sharon. Oh, hold on. Peter Belfon says, Mankind in anger tends to fly off the handle more often. And for the moment, when they rethink words and actions, console themselves by saying, this is not me. Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not you, it's somebody else. Yeah. It's like the old people say when, um, when a drunk person tells you something, <laughs> believe it. Some of them would tell you after, I was drunk, I didn't know what to say. When you're drunk, that's when you speak your mind. When yeah. you're angry, that's when what you have in your mind comes out. So when pe some people say, oh, I was angry, I didn't mean what I say, think twice. Mm -hmm. When somebody tell you who they are, believe it. Mm -hmm. 
And that's, that's, that's what I firmly believe. Words of wisdom from good day Grenada. There you have it, my dear friends. All right, Sharon. Thanks a lot, my dear. Bye. Hang on a second. We're going to listen to uh, today's inspirational word. And let's see what uh, we've got in store today. It comes from Matthew chapter 6, verses 19, 20, and 21. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. See Sharon nodding her head in agreement. Mm -hmm. Pilgrims, that reading from Matthew 6, 19 to 21. Okay, Bradley Vesprey says, George, blessings are guidance. Keep going. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Bradley. Those kind words always mean a lot. Peter Belfort says, yes, they can't tell you sober-minded. <laughs> Okie doke, folks. That's going to do it for the midweek edition of Good Day Grenada. It's been a slice, as always. Nice having you. I certainly wish you have a great day and that you get all your preparations for the holiday season in place. Uh, Peter Belfon says, the scripture reading is a healthy thing, George. Keep it up. You know, Peter, a lot of people think I'm cuckoo when I say this, but reading these scriptures are the most important thing for me. Reading, whether it's on the Sunday morning program, Sunday we do it at the top and bottom of each program. But on uh, weekdays, I just do it um, at the bottom of the program. So important. I believe that that's one of my key callings in life. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a preacher. I just give you the word of God as it is written. I'm not a preacher. Okay? Thank him. Thank him. Okay, so yeah, have a great day, folks, and uh, by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Hit it.